My oh my, dear listeners, what a fun day it is so far today. Happy Friday to you. We were actually thinking we would take the day off today, uh, but uh, that's not quite how it worked out, and that's okay with us. Um, came across uh, some stuff this morning, and it gave me an idea, and going to go ahead and do a video. So, I am Dan, this is the Soul of Wisdom. Thank you for joining me. Producer Wife is not with me at the moment, but that's okay. She'll join us next time. Uh, please do uh, visit us at soulwisdom.com, S-O-U-L-E, wisdom.com. There you will find links to the stores that we run, the teachables that we offer, our tip jar, past episodes, all those sorts of things. Please do like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. We would appreciate it. <clears throat> now... So we had a video that we put out a few days ago on Kyle Rittenhouse, and if you're on YouTube, I will link it right about there where I'm pointing, so you can take a look at it if you'd like. So that video in the <clears throat> last few hours has gotten a ton of traction on it, and it's been really interesting having some back and forth comments with people. And one of the things that I'm learning is how people who conceivably should be like united on something are actually in a lot of ways quite divided. <clears throat> and then we also had another video that we put out um, yesterday. Yesterday it was. And that will be linked right where I'm pointing if you are listening on YouTube and you can check that one out too. That one we actually put out on Reddit and exposed it to all sorts of different groups and have had a completely different experience there. So I want to dig into both of these experiences. <clears throat> and uh, I'm also going to pull in an article from NPR that's kind of interesting. Because what I'm learning is that even within the quote-unquote tribes, the right and the left, there's like a whole ton of division. But yet there might be some things that even the right and the left, even within the individual tribes, could conceivably unite on. So... Let's have a discussion, shall we? Okie dokie. I am going to pull up first the NPR article uh, that I said that I was looking at earlier. <clears throat> if you are on YouTube or Rumble, you are visually gifted, feel free to play along on the podcast side. Just listen along. Uh, this was published November 9th, so not too long ago. Um, it says, feel like, you're, feel like you don't fit in either political party. Here's why. And the article talks about a Pew Research Center typology study. And it kind of divides uh, the different groups into their beliefs and then kind of comes out with uh, different labels, okay? So we're going to skip past some of the stuff at the beginning that really doesn't matter. But it uh, divides people into what Pew has as nine categories. And that's uh, faith and flag conservatives, which is about 10%, committed conservatives at about 7 populist right at 11 ambivalent right at 12 stressed sideliners at 15 Now it starts to go left, and it says outsider left 10%, democratic mainstays 6%, established liberal, establishment liberals 13%, and progressive left 6%. <clears throat> now it's interesting to listen to kind of what's what goes inside each of these little groups, okay? So, faith and flag conservatives, it says 23% of Republicans and Republican-leaning independents. Uh, it's the oldest of the Republican groups. They're deeply conservative. They're religious. They're politically engaged. They're overwhelmingly white and Christian. They're the strongest Trump supporters. And four and five say we pay too much attention to January 6th. Committed conservatives... They tend to be highly educated, loyal Republicans, very politically active. They're pro-business. They want limited government. They want less restrictions on immigration than the other three uh, GOP-leaning groups. They're more globalist. They're less enthusiastic about Trump. Populist right, 23% of Republicans are Republican-leaning independents. They are among the least likely to have a college degree, most likely to live rural. They are hardliners on immigration. They are highly critical of the U.S. economic system. They're strong Trump supporters. And 8 in 10 of them believe that the 2022 elections will really matter. Okay. The ambivalent right. Uh, they're the youngest and least religious. Uh, they don't identify as conservative, but are conservative economically. 
they are more moderate than other Republicans on immigration, abortion, same-sex marriage, marijuana legalization. Uh, they lean toward the GOP but not, are not enamored with it. And they're the only GOP group that believes Biden's election was legitimate. Then there's the crossovers. This is 15% of Republicans and Republican-leaning independents and 13% of Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents. They're financially stressed. They tend to tilt left economically and conservative socially. Uh, they're the group uh, to which Hispanic Republicans are more, most likely to belong to. Uh, they're largely disengaged politically. <clears throat> okay, now on the left side, we have the progressive left. They're young and highly educated. Four and five call themselves liberal. 42% say very liberal. They're the most likely to back Bernie Sanders. They're very politically engaged. They're two-thirds white, and they are extremely liberal on policy positions. There's the establishment liberals. They're very politically engaged. They're supportive of the Democratic Party. They're liberal-minded, but prefer measured approaches. Uh, when it comes to race, they say there are <clears throat> societal ills, but they should be changed with existing laws and institutions. They're more likely to back compromise. They're generally upbeat. The Democratic mainstays, they're the older ones, less likely to have a college degree. They identify as moderate. Black Demogra Democrats are concentrated in this group. They have liberal views on race, but are more conservative on immigration and crime and are pro-military. 73% of them say the 2022 elections will really matter. Then you have the outsider left. Uh, they're the youngest group. Uh, they are liberal, especially on race, immigration, and climate. Less politically active, not thrilled with either party. Uh, they say other countries are better than the U.S. Almost 9 in 10 feel that their candidates don't represent their views. Okay. So why did I just talk about that article when I was talking about two videos that we did po that we posted? Well, I'm talking about that article because it illustrated for me how even within the different quote-unquote tribes, the right and the left, you have these little subdivisions, right? And the subdivisions became very clear to me on the Kyle Rittenhouse video. And when you're done with this video, go pull that video up and kind of read through the, uh, the comments, okay? at least as they are so far. We'll see. The video keeps getting more and more comments as it's going, so we'll see where this goes. But as it stands at the time I'm recording this, it's very interesting because <clears throat> what we said in the video was that uh, we support the jury's verdict. We feel that Kyle defended himself, and we feel that uh, everything turned out as it should, though, frankly, we don't think that uh, charges should have ever been brought against him. So we're most certainly not anti-Kyle. Uh, but we did point out that he did an interview on You Are Here, and the way he presented himself didn't do anything to put him in a positive light. That was the angle that we took on that. So we're saying, look, we're pro-Kyle, but we have concerns with how he came across in that interview, and we're hopeful that his his backers, the ones who are supporting him and handling him and guiding him, should... Be in a position to help him do better in the future right well it's interesting <clears throat> to read so the majority of people who are going to watch this video and who are interacting with this video are probably more right-leaning pro kyle at this point i haven't seen an anti a quote-unquote anti kyle comment on the video yet they're all pro kyle but it's interesting that the two camps here have kind of with within the pro kyle group have kind of bifurcated we've got a group that agrees with us and says yes he probably didn't come across in good light and then we've got another group who disagrees with us and is very much kind of that you don't know what you're talking about this kid's great all this kind of talk which is fine everybody's allowed to have their opinion but it's interesting to me that it's it's illustrative in my view of yet again not wanting to have an open mind to other ideas. The reason that we posted this video was that we actually, again, we support Kyle, we support his 
his right to self-defense. We're happy that the trial worked out. We don't think the trial should have happened in the first place. And he's free to express his views. But he has to come across, in our opinion, in a way that keeps him in a positive light. Because right now, he's got a lot of America on his side. And if he, if he's not careful with that, if he doesn't protect that, if some of that that good vibe starts to fall away from him, then it doesn't help him any. That was kind of the point we were trying to make. But it's interesting that those who are very much, very much pro Kyle, they seem to be the least likely to want to accept the idea that, yeah, maybe that wasn't such a great thing. But everybody who's commenting is pro Kyle, but we're also locked in our views that we can't seem to to move even within our own group to find some kind of common ground. And that's why I brought up the Pew thing, is it was showing that even within each of the parties, the Republican and the Democratic Party, there was still this, this division in each one of them. And if you looked at how they were divided out, there wasn't necessarily a lot of common ground within each of the, the parties either, which I guess kind of leads to the question, is a two-party system really going to work for this country much longer? But I don't think a three-party fixes it either. Because if you believe how kind of Pew broke this thing out, it's like a nine party system. So I don't, I don't know how we handle that. But, but the, the show of division that we're seeing in the comments just on this one video is, is super interesting to me because not one person who said you're, you're wrong in your take seem to have like an open mind to it either like a i don't agree with that but interesting idea or something like that that's not coming across it's it's such such hard lines that are being taken it's really interesting to me but as a counterpoint to that are there areas where we could rally around maybe <clears throat> and i point this out because yesterday we did a video on civil forfeiture laws and we linked the video earlier up top if you're on youtube if you're listening on another platform rumble or the podcast side go seek it out it's there okay this video we talked about how we have these civil forfeiture laws all over the united states that for the, the simple simple way of putting this here the police can basically take property with nothing more than the belief that that property might be used in a crime at some point that's the long and the short of it and then they can sit on it forever and people are losing cash cars homes everything else to this without ever being charged with a crime without ever being arrested none of it and people try to pin us into a corner politically most people would peg us as somewhat right you know figure out what we are on your own time but the bottom line is regardless of where we sat politically we saw a huge issue with this it's not right for the government to be able to seize property just cuz and that's essentially what these laws allow for and they date back to the 80s they had to do with the war on crime from the reagan era and now they're being abused in our opinion and then the opinion of a lot of others so yesterday we took this video and we put it out on reddit and we put it in six or seven different subreddits and the subreddits went across more liberal leaning groups more conservative leaning groups, uh, independents, libertarians, everything, okay? And it was interesting because if you look at the comments on Reddit on that video, all right, there is no disagreement in it. Nobody's saying, you don't know what you're talking about, this isn't right, regardless of what political bend that that particular subreddit had, the, the comments were all, yeah, this is messed up yes this needs to be changed yes this isn't right yes we need to work on it all of that so that was interesting because that told me that there are some things that perhaps as a country we could actually unite around and not not be so divided so that gave me a little bit of hope while i'm looking at the rittenhouse video going man even within one group we can't agree i then i, I then look at the the civil forfeiture video and i go man here is something that basically everybody can rally around. So I guess my point here is that perhaps the way forward 
for all of us, whether it be within our individual tribe or within the competing tribes or whatever the case may be, perhaps the thing to do is to find something that all of us can actually unite around. And the civil forfeiture thing was definitely something that people were uniting around and then just say, okay, <clears throat> we have this. Why don't we work to get this done? Let's make this happen. And then perhaps along the way, as we're working on the thing that we can all rally around, we get to know each other a little bit. Because let's be honest, are the groups talking to each other? It doesn't seem like they're always talking to each other within their little sub-tribes, you know? The, the groups on the right aren't necessarily getting along, and the groups on the left aren't necessarily getting along. So the right and the left themselves most certainly aren't talking. But if we could all rally around one thing and go, yeah, let's do this, then we start talking. Then we start learning from each other. And if we can have some kind of open mind and good dialogue, perhaps we learned that the other side isn't all evil, complete morons. Yes, there's going to be a little bit of that on each side, but the vast majority of us should be able to get along and we could start to actually rebuild this country the way that it should be. So hopefully this makes sense and I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for now because I've talked for over 15 minutes and that's enough, but I want you to think about that a little bit. Is there a way for us to find something common and then just go run with it and try to come back together and see each other again and listen to each other again? Because if we can't figure that out, I don't know where we go, but we kind of proved over the last 24 hours, at least in our own little way, that there is perhaps things that we can rally around and not everything has to be so divisive. So I will go ahead and leave it there. If you enjoyed this content, please do hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, hit the punchy thing on Rumble. Uh, subscribe if you're on the podcast side. Uh, please do subscribe to us on YouTube too. The subscriptions really help get us out in front of other people. And if you agree uh, as well, please share this episode on your social media because I really do think there's something here about the idea of getting around some kind of common cause. So I will leave it there for now. Thank you for listening and we will see you next time.